Hey, Chris Lipe here. Do you think you sound too nasal? Does someone you know say you sound too nasal? Ha! Well, I've done another video on this. It's been a while, and I thought it was necessary to do another one with some more illustrations about how incredibly dangerous it is to react to the comment you sound too nasal or I sound too nasal to react to that with your voice because oftentimes we do things with our voice unconsciously that starts to trap our singing as a reaction and how incredibly powerful true developed nasal resonance can be cuz everybody heard Before we get into this, please like and subscribe to the channel and turn those notifications on. Lots of you watching are not subscribed. If you do subscribe, you help to push these videos to a wider audience. And essentially, you're helping others discover more things about their voice. And if you'd like to go further with me as your vocal coach, click the link below and request an invitation to my course, Discover Your Voice. There's a lot to explore. It's a hand-holding journey that I'd look forward to starting with you. A lot of times the term too nasal doesn't actually mean too through your nose. People have taken that term and when they don't like something about a voice, they immediately default. A lot of people do this. Not everybody, but a lot of people immediately default to, "Oh, he sounds too nasal." Or she sounds really nasal. You you sound too nasal there and it doesn't sound right. When really what a lot of times is the case is they're not being nasal enough or you're not being nasal enough. A better way to say this or think about this might be that you don't have a full understanding about how being nasal or not nasal feels and can work for you in your singing. Let me give you an example. I'm going to say the word friend. Friend. Let's examine what happens, what has to happen for us to say that word correctly. If I start and I and I plug my nose, I cut off the nasal energy. I so I don't let any air come through my nose. When I get to that end, it's not going to work, right? Fred Fred, right? There has to be nasal movement there to say that word. Friend has to be there. But if I examine that word even more, fre fre I can cut off nasal energy on e, eh, right? Fre nose is plugged. Friend friend and then I can switch the nasal around, right? I can cut it off. Friend and then put the the energy through my nose but what's happening is i'm creating a, a divide friend friend there's a challenge there to make it sound natural when we're moving our resonance around that's really what the problem is when someone says you sound too nasal or you might think you sound too nasal we are not moving our resonance around well or musically i'm going to continue to explore that word friend friend i'm going to sing it now 
friend, friend, friend. You can tell I'm cutting off my nasal passage. What if I intentionally put nasality in the e? Eh? Friend, friend, friend versus friend, friend. It's not that either one is right or wrong, but there's lots of tonal possibilities there with that simple word on that simple note that can bring out different qualities of your voice. I personally prefer with that note and that word to leave my nasal resonance open, friend, not completely shut off, friend, and then let the sound go through my nose. Let's change the note. Friend, friend, I bring it into my nose as I close it, or I can keep it in my nose at the beginning. Friend, friend, fall. Hear the power, the brightness, and the presence that having an intentional nasal resonance as part of your sound creates. Fall, fall. Not bad, but listen to the color with intentional nasality. Fall, fall. Blending the two approaches. So the first one I did was nasal focused. The other one was not. Fall. Notice how I'm bringing it in and out. Again, this is about experimentation and being able to control and direct depending on preference, rather than singing unconsciously too nasal or not nasal enough. A lot of times what happens when people get this insult is they will, they will intentionally do a, a good job of shutting off all nasality, and then their voice ends up sounding actually more thin, less overtones come out, and, and then they actually start working against themselves. If they record themselves and they go, oh, my voice sounds thin now. Uh, well, it's because you're not taking full advantage of the resonance that you have available to you because you're scared of sounding and implementing nasality. Using single words and choosing consonant breaks to adjust your nasal resonance is a great thing to do like we've been doing. But like I just demonstrated, over one note without a consonant break or a sibilant break, you can experiment as well and discover ways that you can make things flow in a more creative and vibrant way. For example, ooh, 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 ooh. that's more interesting than ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, there's a sheen there and there's balance that you can play with. Let's go through parts of my performance uh, over Everybody Hurts and discuss the different intentional resonance placement between full nasality, intentional nasality, and backing it off and being more of a uh, forward bright belt. Here's the track soloed out for fun. Cause everybody hurts. Okay. A is intentionally not nasal. Every. But then E has a nice balance of intent. Like I feel it in my nose. Even listening to it, I feel it. Cause every. Everybody. And you hear that air above it. That's coming from the nasality. Every that swallowed too much. I can bring that vowel forward without being nasal. Every but it doesn't quite have the same warmth to it. Every there it is. 
Ev- everybody. I'm exaggerating it there, but listen in the track. Listen in the context. Does everybody hurt? Hurt. Balance. Not cut off completely. Everybody hurt. There it is. To comfort. Come. Feeling that, because there's that M. I have to be nasally present there. Comfort in your friends. Really lean into that and feel the sensation. Friends. Work on that tone. It's interesting how many overtones you can bring out by focusing and leaning into that. Even though it sounds not coming through my mouth, changing the position of my mouth and face creates subtle resonance changes as I lean into that nasality. Everybody hurts. Don't throw your hands. Notice how I progressively got more nasal as I went down. Very belty. Did you hear the sheen change? Right there. You can even see it in the waveform here. It goes down a little bit as I as I come down in intensity. And a balance between those two. Don't throw your hands if you feel like you're alone. Ah, listen to that change. Alone. Not as much nasality. Alone. And bringing it forward forward and more nasal at the same time. You're alone, alone. Oh, no, no, you're not alone. Not alone. Putting that nasality before I hit the N makes that N feel more subtle. You're not alone. If I didn't, if I was cutting off the nasality before the N, it would sound more like this. Not alone. Not alone. To me, that, that doesn't have the same sheen or interest. And, you know, I there's some other things going on with this track. There's delay on there. Because everybody hurts. Take comfort in your friends. Here's it raw. Everybody hurts. Don't throw your hands. You can really hear it even more so without the effects on there. That the subtle nasal resonance shifts. So embrace nasality, experiment with it, lean into it, and see what kind of overtones and richness you can, and variety you can infuse into your singing. And the next time someone says, You sound too nasal, chuckle. <laughs> and think about the possibilities. Again, if you'd like to go deeper with me as your vocal coach, click that link below and request an invitation to my course, Discover Your Voice. And make sure that you've liked and subscribed to the YouTube channel and that those notifications are on. We'll see you for more.